This week we talked about imposters. We used the story of the princess and the pea that really kind of shows us like they tested that little princess to make sure indeed she was a princess. And in the end, what the Apostle John does in the epistle of 1 John is he really challenges the church and those who are in Christ to listen closely and test the influencers, the teachers of the gospel, to make sure that they are really holding to the gospel. Here's the four main points of it. First thing, who is Jesus? Test your teachers and influencers. Make sure they know Jesus wasn't just a moral good man. Jesus Christ is the co-eternal son of God. He was fully God, fully man, and he is the only means of our redemption. Anyone who doesn't teach that, run away. They're a liar. The second test is, how they deal with sin. If you deal, if you have people who say we are, you know, they don't, they don't call on people to be convicted of their sin, to be transformed out of their sin. If they are not people who deal with sin as Christ dealt with sin completely at his death, that's where our sin was dealt with. When the wrath of God was poured out on him, we have to recognize if they don't adhere to the way that scripture deals with sin, run away. If they justify sin that scripture and Jesus Christ do not, don't listen to them. They're a thief and a liar. The, set, the third thing is um, the test of forgiveness. If they teach that there's redemption in your own moral purity in finding your true self and being more authentic, run away from them. They're liars. There is only forgiveness found in one place. That's Jesus Christ in his life, death, and resurrection. That's where we experience forgiveness. And once we experience forgiveness, we are going to have to start forgiving people around us because there are times when we hold on to bitterness that scripture doesn't give us room to hold on to. And we have to start forgiving those who may have wounded or inadvertently hurt us. And finally, the fourth test is love. If, if any teacher doesn't teach that you are to love your brothers and sisters in Christ, not hate them, and to have no love for the, the world, the ways of the world, our loyalty isn't to this culture and the things it says is okay. Our love is for Jesus and transforming that culture. Anyone who teaches you to, um, to just kind of go with the flow of culture and doesn't call you to love in a way that Christ loved, which sometimes may be a difficult conversation because you love a person more than you desire for them to just be comfortable. You want them to know Jesus and not be apart from him for all eternity. Love compels us to act. So when we look at those four things, make sure you're asking of me, of the church, of everyone, are they real? Are they really teaching the gospel or are they teaching some amended gospel that allows us to justify sin that God and the example of Christ in his life, death, and resurrection doesn't allow? Grace and peace as you go into groups and answer these questions. All right, kids, these are your questions coming out of short and sweet. Um, I bet you were a little disappointed. You're like, I thought short and sweet was going to be the sermon length, how long the teaching went. But it was not short and sweet. It was normal and long. I'm sorry. All right, here we go, kids. Uh, question number, number one. We all have role models in our lives. There are people that we look up to, athletes we admire, ac admire actors on TV that we want to be someday. Who are some of your role models, and why are they people you look up to? So go ahead and read together that 1 John 2, 9 through 11. I'll read that together as a group real quick, and then we'll jump to the next question. So 1 John explains uh, that anyone who hates someone else is in the darkness. If there is someone who is in the darkness, we shouldn't be looking up to them or following them. We want to make sure to have role models that are in the light that are living in Christ, leaders that follow the views that are given to us from God. 
Are the role models in your life the kind of people who are following the view that God gives us from Scripture? If your role models are those kind of people, that's great. Keep following and listening to them, but always testing what they say. But if they're not, are there other people that you should be tuning into and listening to instead? All right, kids, thanks for joining us for groups tonight. I hope you have a great time hanging out with your friends and enjoy being together. Thanks for taking part in these questions. Have a good one. Aloha. Sayonara. Hey, adults, welcome. These are your questions going into uh, group's content today. Question number one, do you think it's important that the people that influence your viewpoints and decisions are people that hold fast, hold true to the gospel of Jesus Christ as revealed in Scripture alone? Question number two, has there been a time in your life where you thought something was the truth and you acted on it and then it turns out that it was false, that it was a lie? Question number three, what leaders do you look up to? Who are you listening to and who are you reading? Well, hey, thank you guys for being engaged over these past few weeks. I, I love how our groups are growing and you guys are digging into the Word of God and connecting in relationships. I mean, you guys are setting the standard. It's great. So thank you for doing that. Uh, a couple of things we'd like to do. I'd just like to invite you to spend some time remembering God's faithfulness and celebrating it. God gives us that example in the Old Testament. Time and again, he put up um, feasts for the Israelites to go and remember his faithfulness. And we as a church should do much the same. We should remember seasons where God was faithful to us so that when we come into times that are difficult, we're, we're always reminded of God's faithfulness. So I would invite you, if you've been at the church for a long time, tell the stories of when we were at Vreesland and we had to kind of go from there and God didn't God hadn't opened the door for any place new, but then we find ourselves at Ben's Hope and the miracle that that was, and then finding ourselves uh, here at Main Street and redoing this and even now to Foundry Life in the growth and the number of people who've come here and professed their faith. Tell the stories of God's faithfulness, maybe how you came to be a part of the Foundry, maybe how the Foundry uh, got you obeying God, took part in a group. I just invite you. Take this time and give thanks to God in front of one another. Share with one another some of the miracle stories of how you got where you're at or how we got where we're at as a church. It's exciting to see how God's hand has been on everything, and you're the mouthpiece. You're the ones telling the stories of God's faithfulness. So take some time and enjoy the stories of God's faithfulness and goodness to this body and your lives. Have a great night. Grace and peace, friends.